All right, this episode of Game Bite is brought to you by Jinx.com. To get 10% off of your entire shopping cart, use the promo code QUITSTALLING underscore 366 at checkout. It's Shroud not your C9, but first, favorite streamer in the entire Twitterverse. No, wait, not Twitter. Twitchverse. Uh, are you looking to nerf this with a diva shirt? Do other Blizzard games such as HOTS, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft, and are there other games? That... StarCraft. Tickle your fancy. Well, then head on over to Jinx.com. Use the promo code QUITSTALLING underscore 366 at checkout and shop from a wide variety of gamer and geek swag. And when you do, when you do, don't forget to use the promo code QUITSTALLING underscore 366 at checkout and you might just get yourself 10% off. And you know, I mean, you won't. Uh, without a doubt, you will get a 10% discount. So use the promo code QUITSTALLING underscore 366 at checkout. For real. For real. I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. Do it. Do it now. All right, welcome everyone to Game Bite. Yes, this is Game Bite. This the show you are watching right now on twitch.tv slash quitsong is called Game Bite. This is, uh, for those of you who are watching for the very first time, this is our weekly uh, episodic adventure series where two to three fairly young mid... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really want to call it uh, a quarter-life crisis, but it's, 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 we're kind of getting there. Uh, quarter life crises, uh, in, you know, experiencing men are in their quest to find meaning in their day to day lives by talking about video games on the internet. Uh, sometimes we have guests, so yeah, we, I, we have a very special guest today, and I'm pretty sure that's the reason why all ten of you are here right now. So we're gonna get started. I'm your host, the master of ceremonies, Harold Sylvester. I'm broadcasting live from the Quit Stalling Podcast Studio Studio. And uh, yes, Her- that, that, that is how it's spelled. Harold, you did not hear wrong. It's H-E-R-A-L-D, not Harold. I've been told that the difference in spelling ups the sexiness by 0%. Uh, if anything, it takes away from sexiness and you know, just confuses people. But you know, that, enough about me. Uh, I do have a co-host. Sometimes he's here, sometimes he's not. Uh, you know, he's Quit Stalling's resident tavern keeper. It's the Fury Bot himself, Mick the Guzman. How you doing, Mick? Hey guys, good evening. Good evening to everybody watching. Good evening to you, Harold, and good evening to our special guest. I am doing great. I did not make it to last week's podcast. I'm really sorry about that, Harold. You better be. But I am here. I am here. <laughs> we are good. All well, right. Let's move on. Well, our special guest is uh, in the middle of producing Final Draft version 2.539678. Uh, Mick, Mick is, Mick is frozen on purpose. <laughs> I'm going to keep it on him for as long as I can. Uh, it's of course me. he is known around the local esports and streaming scene as Overdrive Esports Design. Hailing from, oh, we got, we got a, we got a host. I'm really just trying to stall because Mick can't hold this forever. Uh, <laughs> challenge accepted, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Ardy Rogashan. How you doing, man? What's up, guys? This is Ardy. Whoa, I, uh, your fans are nuts. Oh, oh, shit. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> this is Ardy. I am the founder, the owner, the mostly one-man studio of Overdrive Esports Design. Graphic design studio based in Southeast Asia. And I am here. Thank you, guys, for having me. Yeah, let's get this started, dude. People in the chat are asking you to flex. Can we can we get that going? Can we, can we get that going? <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. I heard some I heard some boxer briefs drop. It's <laughs> All right. So welcome everyone again to Game Bite. Uh, as you can see, Mick is no longer frozen, and we got yeah. RD live from a very professional-looking studio. He puts me to shame. I wish I wish I had like a nice background like that. It's it's but the office. It looks oh, so cool. cool. It looks so professional. I thought it I like was it... like a skyline or something. <laughs> yeah, because no. I'm in the second floor, so. Mm. It looks oh, good, that? dude. Okay, Pretty so good. how are you doing, RD? I am doing great. Uh, it's been a busy week so far, so I've been trying to squeeze every word that I can as long as it keeps me sane. But... Oh, man, yeah. I'm sure. Okay, so... Uh, this is what we do at the start of every show, is I ask the folks at home, as well as you guys, what have you been playing? And uh, I'm, I'm really interested to see what the chat is going to say, but, you know, 
I, I gotta start with whoever's next to me. So, Mick, <laughs> what have you been playing? Why, thank you for asking. Uh, as the, as per usual, I've been playing some Hearthstone. Um, the Time Tinker event has been pretty good. It's been giving me a lot of dust and a lot of gold. So, if you guys want to try to catch up, if you guys want to return and by any chance just want to play again, this is the perfect time right now because they're giving away a, a ton of uh, arcane dust and gold so you can purchase packs with it. Um, the packs are cheaper now. <laughs> yeah, packs are cheaper. There's like a packs bundle, right? Yeah, there's a... Bu oh, no, the bundle's done. Oh, the bundle's uh, done. Okay. Yeah, the bundle is done. But then, yeah, they were giving it away for about $7 for 10 packs, I think. Two okay. of each um, two of each uh, expansion, including the classic one. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Anyway, um, aside from that, of course, I've been... I picked up this game on my mobile phone. It's called Final Fantasy Omnia Opera. So it's... Okay. it's base so it's basically, you know, your typical... Um, Typical pay to win, pay to win, you know, mobile game, but, mm. <laughs> imagine, mm. but with all of your favorite Final Fantasy characters from one, oh sorry, from two all the way up to fourteen. Yeah, fourteen, because they didn't include fifteen yet. Oh wow! So, yeah. Okay, it's pretty cool. It's a it's a really nice game. Um, you know, it's it's a perfect toilet game. Because it takes up a lot of time, and there's there's story, so you gotta have story, just especially when you're constipated or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So, RD man, what have you been playing? Uh, right now I've been play I've, I've started playing Dauntless just this weekend, and it oh, is so good. A good How's choice. that been? Uh, it was great because I've been I've been playing with a friend of mine, so we've been. Uh, going on hunts almost every day right now, and yeah, when I'm out, I'm I play with my Switch. But I have it right now, so I'm playing Breath of the Wild. Oh, sweet! Have yeah. you finished Breath, Breath of the Wild before? Not yet. So oh. this is my first time playing a Zelda game. Mm, nice. It's it's really fun. It's really fun. Hello. Uh, yeah, but it it is a really good game, isn't it? it? It's one of those games like Skyrim that you could play for God knows how long. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why I bought the Switch in the first place. And this is the first game that I bought, that I bought so I got, I got it covered for the first three to four months of purchase. Awesome. Have you, have you played on the TV or is it more of like a, I'm going to walk around with this forever? Kind of a... Um, I'm normally not at home, so I, I try to carry the Switch around with me at all times. Mga snatchers, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, that's awesome, dude. What, what else have you been playing? And then I started playing uh, Realm Royale recently. Ooh, nice. Oh, yeah. It, it is fun. It's very, fun. very interesting game, yeah. It is, it is. Aside from my uh, Overwatch and PUBG kind of games. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I was actually, you know, when, when I first heard of Realm Royale, I was expecting more medieval fantasy. I was not expecting guns to be part of the... I was, I was, <laughs> I was hoping it'd be like bow and arrow and like that yeah. would be arranged. But there's a lot of gunplay happening, so... I. It kind of threw me off. It threw me off. I'm gonna be honest. It's it's funny though, because if you if you played Fortnite, but you kind of suck at building, you kind of yeah. kind of want to play Remora instead. That's why. Oh, been doing. yeah, because there's suck, no building. Right? You, you go around a predetermined map, like a preset map. If I'm yeah. not mistaken. Oh, that's so yeah. awesome. Oh uh, yes, I saw a lot of Twitch players playing, and yeah. it, it looks good. Like the the animation for for mounting a horse alone is is is, is a reason <laughs> to play. Yeah. It's basically Skyrim. Yeah! <laughs> it's Skyrim <laughs> with guns. Oh, boy. Yeah. Ne Nezaru in the chat says, Paladin's reskin uh, equals Realm Royale. <laughs> kind of is. Mm -hmm. A lot of That's people true. who haven't played Paladins before start playing Realm Royale, myself included. Oh. oh okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right, chat. Let us know what you've been playing. Uh, I saw so, someone say uh, that RD was uh, playing with their hearts. So. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow, we. Yeah, uh, Harold, what have you been playing, my friend? Ah, oh, thanks for asking, Mick. So, I've just been playing uh, a little bit of Overwatch. Just a, just a tiny bit of Overwatch. You know, just a little bit. You know, just, just, just some, on some. that grind. Climb, climbing like 500 SR. Uh, <laughs> aside from that, I've been, playing, I've been playing FIFA because of the FIFA fever. Because of the World Cup fever, I got back 
and uh, I turned FIFA 18 uh, back on. Before the World Cup, I'd only played like three hours of FIFA 18. So oh, wow. now I'm I'm back in the thick of it, and it's been really you good. It's good though. Yeah, it's so good. Uh oh, RD froze. He's 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 definitely oh, no. Black Panther. Okay, he's back. Uh, you you froze for a second. You you worried me. Uh, Ooh, sorry about that. It's okay. It's okay. You know we're, we're used to technical difficulties here on uh, yep. quit stalling. Uh, yeah, FIFA. But, yeah, FIFA's good. Like uh, it. You know, this this year was the best it's ever been. And then next year, we're going to get the Champions League uh, license in FIFA 19. So I'm just warming up, pretty much. Champions? Uh, yeah, man. They, they stole the licensing away from Konami. So Pro Evolution yeah. Soccer is dead next year. <laughs> pretty Finally. much sleeping, a sleeping game. Yeah, Pro, Pro Evolution yeah. Soccer is kind of bad these days. It, well, it these used days. to be good. It, it used, used to be, be so good. good. It used to be so much yeah. better than FIFA, and then yeah, it was more slowly... realistic than FIFA before. And now it's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, FIFA just crept up and and yeah. got, got good. It it get good. Uh, they were stealing licenses left and right. Okay. Because I remember uh, spending most of my holiday Christmas holiday playing FIFA 18, just thanking to the whole Alex Hunter story. Oh man! Like, Shit! Oh. Dude, the journey. The, the journey. journey. I love the dream. Oh, the baby. Man, I, I, see, I, I never got to play uh, FIFA eight, uh, FIFA 17's journey, so I didn't play 18's journey. And then I'm thinking of streaming 17's the journey storyline, and then going into 18 since 19's coming up soon. Yeah, like you I, I might just do that. Like I might just binge that. Well, you have about two months before it releases. <laughs> oh, two or three months. So that's enough time, and, if you ask me. And then Battle for Azeroth is coming, so I'm oh dead crap, in the water. yeah. Yeah. August. You have a month. Yeah. You have a month, Harold. It's gonna be good. Uh, Nezaru DG in the chat says he's been playing Darkest Dungeon. Uh, Gibbs No Chill says Overwatch. And uh, same with same with Jesus. No surprise. I know I knew Jesus could walk on water, so it only makes sense that he play <laughs> Overwatch as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Gibbs and Chill says I only watched the Journey on YouTube Let's Plays. That's that's how we do it. It's one yeah. of the best four storylines out there. You oh, played this sports game. Did you play Ooh. 17? Like, uh, did you play the journey there? No, but I only watched it because I started playing FIFA again in 18. Oh, okay. So can you just pick it up and, and go and go? Do you not? Yeah, because there's to... a flashback level. Oh, nice. Okay, so maybe I don't need to play 17 anymore. Maybe I just, uh, maybe I just yeah, just watch it. You can 18. watch like the cinematics movie that you can find on YouTube. They there's have a, a lot of those there. there. Okay. Gibbs, man, link scenes. me to those cinematics. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, as the rest of the chat lets us know what they've been playing, I think we should get on to the meat of the show. I think it's, it's time we, we found out why RD's here. RD, who but? Uh, so <laughs> let's get this going. Where's, where's my soundboard? What's Whale. a good sound to play? Uh, here we go. Let's play this. Welcome to the end, friend. All right, welcome to the end, RD. And this is the part where we interview our guest on Game Bite. So let's uh, let's tell you who it's brought to you by. It's brought to you by the Quitstalling Geekcast. Back next week, Tuesday, 12 noon, same time. Me and Wancho are back talking about all things geek. Uh, rumors about Lando Calrissian appearing in Ep Star Wars Episode Nine. What are they going to do with Carrie Fisher? Luke Cage is back again, and Archer just had its finale. Find out more on the Kutzlan Geekcast next week, Tuesday, 12 noon, during your lunch break. All right. So, guys, let's find out about RD's soul. Let's, let's find out what makes the artist tick. Let's, let's, let's find out why he's the next Philippine version of Basquiat. Not, not really, but, you know, like, he's really good at it. He's really good at what he does. So let's, let's find yes, out. Yes, he is. All right, so first things first, RD, for those who don't know, for, for those that aren't your fanboys and are just randomly downloading Gay Bite episodes because they found it in the top 10 list of podcasts that specific minute. Because, uh, you know, that's the only way we can... <laughs> that's the only way we can, we can make <laughs> our way you. into the top 10. Uh, RD, man, who are you? Uh, yeah, I am RD. Uh, during the day, I work as an art director for Tier 1. Uh, then most of the time, I freelance and I own my own uh, studio called Oof Drive Esports Design. So it started 
2016. Uh, been kicking off ever since. I am a designer by trade, by title, and also, yeah, I would never call myself an artist. It's like, I don't know. I kind of I can solve problems instead of making things look good. So it's mm. the second layer of things. So, yeah. oh, that's so cool. That's wow. so cool, man. The fu- there's function with with Artie's work, guys. It's not just it's not just about looking good. That's awesome. That's so cool. Okay, so uh, you're you're very known in the local esports scene and streamer scene, and you've mentioned that you're a designer. So what are the things that you design? Can you give us some uh, examples? Yeah. So my my reach is actually not just in the Philippines. So I work with Southeast Asian countries, even uh, countries in Europe and North America. So Mostly, I work branding stuff. Uh, for example, that the things shown on screen is a branding work I've done for uh, an Australian esports organization called uh, Draconic. And Sorry, then, what yeah, was that? Draconic, yeah. It's Draconic. Basically dragons. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, uh, most of the branding stuff that I've done is for gaming teams, uh, organizations, and players, even uh, the huge corporations out there uh, have Ooh. sought my work. Uh, could, yeah, could you pretty, name pretty some some of these huge corporations? Uh, I have a I have a work posted on my page. It's for Red Bull. So oh. I have a, I've I've done work for Red Bull Esports in Malaysia. Well, let me look for that real quick. Red Bull Esports. That's pretty huge, dude. How did it's you get that? It's also football. So <gasps> they're the esports the soccer team. Football? They're FIFA soccer yeah, team. Football. Because yeah. it's not called soccer. It's called football, football. ladies and gentlemen. Ah. So, so that's one of my you, largest projects. That's pretty cool, dude. So, what exactly did you do? Like, did you do the the esports jerseys for their FIFA 18 team? Like, what what exactly no, uh, did you do? I did the logo for their FIFA event. So oh. it was called Extra Time. It's pretty that's good. That's so cool. So the I winners can't find, will I can't find it. It's on my timeline photos. Okay, let me. I'm gonna go through. So keep keep explaining. Keep explaining. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the winners of this this tournament will go to Sao Paulo, Brazil, to, for the World Finals Ooh. for FIFA 18. So it's wow. kind of a big deal that they've sponsored it. That's, that's awesome. Cool. That is so dope. And then uh, one of the recent works I've done is for a streamer, a PUBG streamer called uh, Andy Barrow. It's he's a uh, pretty famous online. He has a lot of large following. And yeah, international superstar. He played for Method GG. At one point, was there a PUBG Whoa. player? That's that's wait, that's huge. What's his name? Sorry, uh, Andy Pyro. And it's also on the timeline photos. There, I found it. I found it. Let me, let me bring it up on screen. So, how do you get gigs like these, like the Red Bull uh, esports gig and, and Andy Pyro? How did how do they find you? So, uh, for these clients, I think uh, people referred to me, referred me to them. For example. The Andy Pyra project was referred to me by Riku, then she, so I got the project by, because of her. And then the Red Bull project was uh, recommended to me by a friend, the Julius Banus. Oh, Banus! Shout out to Banus, oh, nice. man. Hey, yeah. I'm man. Ma. So <gasps> yeah, so basically, I made it. I made the network and then, and the work shows for it, I guess. So like, uh, they've been throwing me these projects and accepted it. That's awesome, dude. Oh, sorry. Uh, could, could I ask you to move the the mic slightly closer to your, like you're, you're slightly softer okay. than you were earlier. My bad. My bad. No, that's cool, dude. You you, you good? You Gucci. You Gucci. But yeah, that's so cool. So I, I do want to ask about your process a little bit. We we went through uh, a little bit of a glimmer, a, a little glimpse of it during the pre-show. But how do you start off with these designs? So can we, let's start off with like, okay, I'm your client. Uh, I want a logo. How does that work? How does that work? All right. So. We can do a role play if you want. <laughs> Nick, man, oh, I always do the role play. Go for it. Go for you, it. You can be like my client. So if you're my client, uh, so what's your objective for if you wanna? Why do you want to get graphics from me? What's your objective in the long run? Wait, is it me? Wait, yeah. wait. I thought it was Harold. Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Wait, 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 okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so. Uh, the purpose for uh, getting some overlays from you, and of course, some, a design is to, to um, further solidify my brand. Thing is, I feel like that um, having a logo or getting something will um, pre- will show that I'm a very presentable streamer. That I'm actually serious about 
doing this profession, which is why I approached you, because you are the best of the best. Right, so is that good? now that parang, I got I got everything to say, I tend to ask a lot of questions towards my clients in the form of an interview as well. Mm-hmm. So like I ask oh, okay. them, uh, what are your reasons for streaming? Who the hell are you? And what do you want to do for your stream? What is your vision for the future? And then, for example, uh, what's your personality like? Like, mm-hmm. how are you off camera, on camera? What is your gaming persona? And then, yeah, after that, we'll be asked. I'm ask. I ask the the specific questions like, uh, if, you, if you have a specific theme in mind, let me know. If you have a specific color palette, let me know. Ah. And then, and then, mm-hmm. I, then from there, I, I try to to make a solution out of it. Then I form the case studies that, you, as you've seen, there's uh, the one that you showed earlier. Part of a oh, case study has been done. Uh, well, there it is. There we go. Yeah. So there we go. It's a part. It's part of the concept for that I've shown. So from there is a brand study, a solution, a mood board, and a concept board. So I try to visualize the idea through mood boards, so I save more time. And then once it's approved, then I draw the concept before the approval. And afterwards, I just do it digitally, and it's good. Dude, that's so cool. And you know, do you ask them what wow. the reason for being is? Like, is that is that? Yeah, a... it's, it's, it's kind of my it's kind of the way I try to live like right now. It's uh, ikigai. Oh man, that's so cool. Ja- so, some uh, Japanese philosophy for uh, mm-hmm. it is, for, it for is. productivity. That's that's so cool. Okay, so you know, once you've gotten uh, the, let's say the drafts. And do you show multiple drafts to your clients, or is it just like, okay, this is the one I think I should show them? How does that? How does that work? So normally, I try to send at least two drafts, three if I, I have another idea. That's usually two, so they have a, an option. And okay. then from there, once they've chosen a design, they'll probably ask me to refine these things. Uh, for example, the project I did for Red Bull took me about four months just to get a perfect a sketch for them. Wow. So the project started December. Wow. So I finished the sketch at around April because they've been asking me to do several revisions towards the study. And afterwards, we just did it digitally. It took me another two to four weeks. So, so it's a long process. Wow, yeah, that, that, that is quite a, a bit of time. And what's the longest you've had to spend on a specific piece of work? Uh, probably this one. This was this was the longest. I said Two months. Four to five months of work revisions, then some procrastination at the side. It's a, it's a long project, so I kind of want to unwind. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's also the reason why I bought FIFA in the first place. Oh, okay. I've never okay. tried to immerse myself with the yeah. aesthetic, so I bought FIFA and then I tried to implement it in game and in this brand new project. Yeah, I can see it, like with the mm-hmm. with the background because that, that's very uh, in tone and in tune with with what happens in like transitions in FIFA 18. So uh, you 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 pretty much nailed it. I I do want to say, like it looks good, dude. Thank you, man. Thank you. Oh you man. So in total, it took you what five months to do? Yeah, this? five months. Wow. It was it was hard, but it was worth it to say. Uh, I've shown my I've showcased my work for Red Bull and. It was great. So, yeah. so do you tell them off the bat, like, okay, I think it's going to take this long. Like, is uh, Do you tell them the timeline at the start, or do they give you the timeline? Uh, they give me a timeline, but since they also have to do revisions and so on, so it kind of stretches out. So the normal yeah. timeline was supposed to be half of the project, so like two to three months of work, mm-hmm. most, including all the revisions, but kind of extended down as more revisions come in. Oh man! No, so it's my fault, basically. It's, <laughs> it's been hard to fault. get what they want, but in the end, it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Don't don't blame yourself, man. Getting getting <clears throat> what what's in someone else's mind to appear in front of them, like as as a as a physical <laughs> as a, as a physical yeah. representation, that is not an easy task. And you know, it is you, not. you did it such is, a great I, job with I it. Try to uh, so try to them. Even all the all the people that I'm working with try to psych them as much, so that uh, they know what they want. And yeah, that's so cool. So, wow. uh, how long do you interview them? Like, I'm assuming you do like video conference calls and, and stuff like that. 
uh, it's usually a conference call, or if I can't make it, I just write a long email regarding and listing out down all the questions. So on, it turns out it turns into a beautiful conversation. That's Ooh. so cool, man. I, I I'm I'm beleaguered by by the process because I've I've always been interested in stuff like this because I myself am not as creative as I'd like to be. So like, I I, I enjoy the process. I love watching like behind the scenes yeah. stuff. Uh, for mm-hmm. for for things like this, so that's 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 really cool. And You're wrong. So, oh, what's that, Nick? No, no, no. Go ahead. I was just gonna, I was just gonna say we were we were both the same. That... Oh yeah, man. Because it, it, yeah. it's such a cool thing. Uh, so you you design logos. Uh, do you do? Uh, this is where I, I make it look like a natural conversation. Do you do like streamer layouts? Like uh, I, yeah, I, I saw do. you did like cover photos, uh, like with uh, with Pyro earlier. So. Uh, so you do layouts for the streamers. Yeah. Wow. So part of the day job in tier one is like I try to do overlays and graphics for the streamers that I've done. For example, that one's for Bianca. So I've done layouts for them. Ooh. I've done Wow. The very first one I've done was for Ari, Ari Neiman. The, so Oh nice. That was one of the first projects I've done. He turned into a good friend of mine now. So Oh that's it's cool. Okay, and so, uh, like, with, with things like this, you know, with, with streamer layouts, with alerts and stuff like that, how long does that take you? Uh, as long as I finish the main art, it can take me at least two, two to three days. It's easy. It's just easy level one. Okay, the, not bad. The main art was so difficult. For example, Gibson shows uh, uh, graphics. That took me a while because I've been... I, I made the uh, key art you know, for everything, and then I have it approved. And then before I before I do all the overlays and animations for it, so that took me a while. Oh wow! And uh, is it, does this come at a premium, RD? I I'm afraid to ask you. Like, uh, <laughs> will this cost me an arm and a leg if I if I go to Overdrive Esports Design? Oh I mean, it, the price is more expensive than most of the local streamers, local artists out there. So I've, I've mm-hmm. been trying to position myself as a good brand. Like, I want to raise my price so I can raise the standards of the industry sort of thing. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, I, I, I didn't want to sound unprofessional, but you know, like, cause, uh, nowadays you can get people to do things for, I've, I've seen this in, in like Facebook groups that are for like uh, young professionals and pe- you know, people try and get away with, uh, oh, uh, let's do an X deal, or ca- can I pay you this much now right. and then this much later? And uh, on some level, it's all right, but on on a whole nother level, it's so wrong because you want to have artists value their art and people who design yeah. value their designs. So that, that's why I wanted to get it from from your lips. You know, like I I appreciate work that the uh, work like the ones that you do, and you know I I feel like the artist and the designer themselves should value their work. It's one of the things that I want to impose on all of the artists that I've seen online, even if the yeah. artists that I know, they, they've been producing good work, but they tend to lower their prices just so they can get the work. So it's pretty uh, hard on them. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, I've, I've seen some artists like uh, getting graphics for like a three digit price, but that's not going to work for me. They, you, you pay for the skill, you pay for the process, the years of education, the tools that you've learned and mastered, and Definitely. techniques, and then you're just yeah. gonna pay them this shit price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah, someone in the chat, uh, Nezuru said, we can't eat on exposure, and that's so true. That like, is true. Yes, if if, if you are at a, uh, you know, somewhat financially stable, yeah, the, the exposure would be great, but uh, you know, especially for people who are just getting started and, you know, have bills to pay, ha- you know, they have food to eat. They, they can't true, really. Yeah. So Although, yeah. one of my first projects was for zero cash. Mm-hmm. So I just wow. want to get my name out there. For example, um, I, I have one of my first projects with no pay, but the returns was great because I, I ended up working in an industry the esports industry so kind of paid off in the end oh, that's great so it, it's, it also makes sense that you you have to choose what you want to work for free for so it's a calculated decision by end. 
Yeah, take calcul. Yeah, that's that's a great way of putting it. Take calculated risks. Weigh the benefits. Yeah, weigh the uh, benefits. Yeah, because you're gonna get bosses that are gonna work you to the rail, but you know, in the end, it's gonna work out. And then you're gonna get those jerks who pay you nothing, and work yeah. you work you to the bone, and then you know, you got nothing in the end from it. So the normal the normal way to do that is to if you ask someone to work to work on a project for, for that project for free. Uh, you're not. You're normally gonna get it for free. But uh, if people approach you for the work, you have to charge them according to your value. Oh, I like that. That's I like that. So, but on it, if you you volunteer yourself for the work, so meaning you have spare time or spare resources. To yeah. Pay, so mm-hmm. you can charge it for free or not. So, but makapal din mo ako if ever. Okay. Yeah. That that makes sense. So aside from streamer layouts, from from logos, what what else do you do? Uh, mostly uh, anything graphics wise, except for print, because I try to stay away from print graphics. Oh really? Yeah, I, but although I do jersey designs, I do apparels. Oh nice! Yeah, for oh, I think I saw teams, a shot that of that. For apparels, so some of my work has been showcased at the World Championships, meaning at the international, at the high wow. res expo, the Baladins World Championship. Oh, that's this so my cool! Fun. Wow. So, so, are the templates yours? Like, do you do you have to create your own templates and then start throwing the designs on them? Uh, I bought it. Oh, okay. Efficient, smart, smart. So I kind of, I try to buy all the templates that I could. So one example is for which which team is it? Execration. If you if you want to scroll down, or Entity Gaming. So on my timeline photos, you you'll see the. These are the full, these are the jerseys that were used in the world championships for their respective That's games. So I'm kind of proud that I've done work for them. Dude, yeah, that, nice. that is so cool, and uh, it, it's it's pretty inspiring. The fact that you know a lot of people have taken notice of you. You must be swamped with work, though. I kinda am, yeah. <laughs> and so, how how does one get get? time get get a get a shot at getting a design from you is it like a long queue are you very selective of your clients how does that go um right now it's a long queue but i also choose who i want to work with say but i try to weigh in the person itself if they're okay if they're if they have a bad rep or not like mm-hmm. if they're a pretty good person basically we're gonna work and then if also, they're known try... to not pay <laughs> yeah yeah basically if they're known to not pay Oh, Dude, wow, these jersey designs sure. are so cool. Wow, that's so thank nice. You, thank you. I, will, I have a lot more of those. So some of them are used already, uh, been using for world championships or for the local tournaments, wow. national leagues. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> these look really good, man. I, I am so jelly, and uh, you know, like from a design perspective, do you have, when you do like jerseys like this, do you have to? design them with the warp of the jersey in mind like with the way the fabric bends around the body because i you know I, i'm looking at the jersey right now yeah. you can't really okay so you don't treat this as like a 2d thing and you just slap the design and you kind of have to warp yeah. you have to warp yeah. it around if I, wow. I, for example for some of the jerseys that i've done i try to make them look like the player wearing it looks thinner so it's like a body armor <clears> sorts Oh. Some of the players are huge guys, so I kind of want to <laughs> slim them down. Slim them now. Using the jerseys. Okay. Mm. Dude. Oh, man. I'm so... Uh, usually when I when I talk you, about designs you like this... You had me I, at I, slim me down. <laughs> I'm so old. We're gonna make gonna this order. jersey, we're going to slim you down. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, there's a lot to slim down down, down here. <laughs> there, there. Mick, man, you're not you're not chunky. You're you're thick. Yes, I need to slim down. Like uh, you you could, you could wrestle. I th- I think you could go pro wrestling here in, in the local scene. Yeah, with but I still head. want. But it does. But it doesn't. You know, like I still want that shirt, man. It looks good. <laughs> it doesn't take away the fact that, that I want it. Stable. Here's Mick. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay, that, that's really cool and. Uh, I, I, I want to continue asking you questions. So, like, uh, if, I hope we're not taking too much of your time, RD. Like, uh, no, it's fine, dude. Do you have a time limit? Do you have to be home by, like, uh, by like a certain time? Yeah. 
Awesome. Okay, so uh, I, I do want to ask a couple more questions. Like, uh, what are the teams uh, and leagues that you look at to, uh, to help you with your design process? So I take inspiration from the Overwatch League right now. Oh. The nice. LCK, LPL, um, how Dota 2 tournaments run, for example, Epicenter, The Summit, mm-hmm. and then the ESL E-Leagues of the world. So basically I try to see all the major tournaments and how they do their designs. As well, I also look at non-esports uh, things like wrestling, for example, when I see wrestling production. Wrestling. Oh, really? So you take inspiration from wrestling as well? Yeah. So I kind of have a persona of like, I'm a wrestling character out of the promotion or something. That's cool. Do you look <laughs> at uh, traditional sports or, or, or like sports like basketball and soccer? Yeah, I, I also play those. I play those games. Oh, nice. Okay. So I, I uh, like, do you use like traditional sports uh, silhouettes and looks? It, to inspire you with your esports designs, or do you keep those exclusive? Um, right now, for football, because I, I, I saw the new rebrand of the Premier League, and dude, that's so amazing. So, it was it's bold. one of the inspirations that I have right now. I'm trying to make sure that I kind of get how they design their work. Mm-hmm. So, for example, the new Premier League graphics look amazing. Because they, they changed their logo, they have new animations, they have new TV graphics. And football in general is just so good at their graphics, so kind of tune in to that. Definitely, yeah. And, you know, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I think a year, two years ago is when this happened, and the Premier League went through a huge overhaul with their design. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they, they kept a lot of the basic fundamentals of what keeps their logo their logo, but essentially what they did is they went from a more traditional. Uh, full body lion to the lion head uh, just the lion head and a round badge which is yeah so bold it, it's so hard to, to be able to pull that off and have people agree with it because when when you change something that's so classic like the pre- the old premier league logo you're bound to get pushback and it's been True. received pretty well it was it was and the, the way that they do it is because the reason that they want to make sure that everything is aligned digitally yeah. and oh, works well yeah. with print as well. Mm-hmm. So so they kind of present it with complementary graphics like the animations and True. The new TV graphics. That yeah. so good. If you awesome. actually look close at the logo, it actually is somewhat circular. So it's trying to also mimic like a ball. That's just I don't know if you guys notice it, but I kind of notice it how it's a little more circular. Mm-hmm. compared to like the original Premier League logo so they're yeah. trying to say oh okay this is also we also have football it's not because it's not soccer it's football okay it's yeah. soccer yeah, the yeah. British called it soccer first they can't they can't pull back now it's too <laughs> late they, they, and they say soccer so so nicely too so they yeah uh, don't get me started on that debate okay but yeah so <laughs> yeah I you know talking about inspirations this is this is a prime example because yeah if you're looking at the old logo which is for those of you watching the video feed the one on the left you know it, it's sort of got a, a bit of a timeless feel so to to think and to have the balls to say you know what let's let's go more modern and move to the to the logo the new logo on the right it's it's a gutsy move that, that that's worked out so well for them and with that you know you had the new graphics come in transition graphics scoreboard and it's all looked so good. And, you know, I, I have to give props to whoever designed that. I think I had a video earlier on uh, of who designed it. Like, it's gutsy. And, mm-hmm. you know, they pulled it off very well. Yeah. So uh, are there other uh, traditional sports or are there other inspirations in terms of esports and, and leagues uh, already that, that you look to? Or uh, have, have we tackled them all? I think we pretty much tackled them all. Awesome. But, uh, there's a lot of esports leagues out there that have good yeah. graphics, especially the Overwatch League right now. Man, the graphics yeah. are great. Yeah. All right. All right, Mick. You, do, <clears throat> do you have any questions? I've been I've been hogging the spotlight. You know. Uh, you know. Uh, I actually just want to ask. Like, I know this might get a little bit controversial if I ask you this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Sure. In the local in the local esports scene, are there any teams uh, that have you know like could you like uh, 
say one team that you that you like as in like uh, a team that has a really nice logo like in your opinion it's like oh this this is very innovative or is it like something you're not supposed to like talk about hmm. it's actually hard say para on it I haven't done team logos for local teams as much, so it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to gauge in. But right now, the new Mineski logo looks good. Say, oh, before their logo was okay, the timeless one. Yeah. But they changed their logo twice before settling on a new one. So the so those two logos was faced with community backlash, and then they transitioned to the new one, which is a modern. Take on the old logo, which is yeah. actually good. Well, uh, could you guys link me to the new one? I'm not, I'm not too familiar because I'm seeing like the shuriken, the one that kind of looks like a weird shuriken. Yeah, and you can check that's... the Dota teams page. Okay, yeah, I gotta look for that. Yeah, I'm super interested. So it's oh. pretty good. It's pretty good actually. I, I'm a fan of their new logo. Wow. And would you ever, cool. would you ever like consider, uh, working with? Uh, local esports teams here for like when they if they approach you for like making making a logo for, for them yeah, yeah for for branding. Branding. is it this oh. one no it's the dota the dota team oh okay shoot. wait I'm we're getting long one i'm even searching it for myself <laughs> could, could someone link it in the chat <laughs> <laughs> i'm so, I'm curious so lost i'm so lost yeah I'm, I'm really curious now okay so that's cool and you know have you ever you know, just kick back and, and as an exercise, be like, okay, what would it look like if I redid the logos of these teams? Have you ever done that? I try to, but I kind of stop. Say, I'm, I'm just waiting for them to approach me and pay me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Why do the work for back. free? Yeah. See, if I oh, post man. it, they're, they're probably going to use it anyway. And I just right? don't want to pay. <laughs> wow. So you're, you're avoiding any, uh, any legal issues, any copycat issues? Yeah. Is it this one? Yeah, it is. It is. That's yeah, the one. that's that ah, one. Okay, okay. That's pretty sick right now. New Age Shuriken. Yeah. Like, oh, we got Sega to the chat. Hey, say. Hey, say. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Good Friday. <laughs> okay, so McMahon, go, 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 go lay some more questions hmm. on RD. Go well, lay so RD. RD. I mean, we've discussed about your body of work, which is amazing to be honest to say the least and so i want to i want to ask you now like if there are there any tips and tricks you could give you know an aspiring graphics designer like like yourself who want to pursue something in the, in the you know in the same industry as you as in in esports or like for other you know for for streaming in general do you have any tips and tricks for them hmm, i think uh, practice, but not only practice, but practice the right way, to the point that you're you're improving every time you practice. So mm-hmm. that's one of the way that one of the tips that I should give. Then do it every day. Oh. Then wow. You need to you need to do it unconsciously. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to make a new design every day. I'm trying to do this unconsciously fast and yeah. with the quality that I do. And then, yeah, of course, uh, try to try to be original as well. Even though you try to get a lot of inspirations out there, but make your own style, of course. Because yeah. a lot of people try to just just yeah. blatantly copy the style and not develop their own. Yeah, I see. And yeah. Mhm. I see. Cool. So what about what about those? Uh, you mentioned a while ago that you know volunteering is not bad but then like you know doing making these overlays uh, for free is actually also bad at the same time so would you say that uh, for people who are just starting out is it like a wise decision to actually do free work at because you're just practicing you're like a newbie you want to get better Hmm. if you want to get better and then the the, the client wants to have quality graphics i suggest uh, not doing it for free because you might ruin their brand in the long run if they don't get the quality of graphics that they deserve. I see. Uh, you can do self projects for once, you know, uh, oh, okay. not engaging client work, but yeah, it's not advisable. Honestly. 
I see. So you're gonna have a hard time getting clients anyway, oh, even yeah. if you offer your work for free. Yeah. Oh really? Wow. I I've, I've actually seen that firsthand because I do have a I do have a a relative who is who just started you know who just graduated so he's trying to start out as a graphic designer and he's he's mm-hmm. been offering he's been offering oh no dude I'll, I'll make your overlay for you or no i'll make this for you i i i was like okay with it but i felt bad because i was like oh man this guy's doing it for free and yeah, he's right? been doing it every single day and i feel bad for him because it's it's really a struggle because aside from me there's no one else not to say he sucks i'm saying that there are so many graphic designers out there that actually are already established so it's really like a tough it's a tough uh it's a tough market right now yeah it is it's it's kind of competitive right now yeah very competitive well i mean the great thing is you know the more competitive it is the better it yeah. pushes the artists to become it is uh yeah and anyway, we've talked about your body of work rd uh gibbs in the chat wants to talk about your body uh so <laughs> let's uh, yeah how, how much gym time do you get on that thing uh, um uh all right you know, we can have <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, part of the part of the yeah. office benefits is like we we have access to a coach so oh wow we, we do three to four times of gym a week that's also included basketball so we, we're trying to be active uh, members of the team of esports we're trying to be physically fit because we've been sitting on a chair for most of the day that's so right. cool. Oh, oh, man. That was for you, yeah. Gibbs. That was for yep. you. Uh, uh, Seiko Chu Seiko in the Chu, chat has yeah. a very oh, important man. question. Uh, and I think, you know, this would resonate to a lot of people. Uh, and she, she asks, you know, how would you advise someone uh, on, on how to price their graphics or how to price their work? Okay, so a lot of factors goes into pricing. For example, my pricing depends on a lot of factors. But... The main factor that you want to price yourself is through value. So if you feel like you, your talent co- or your art costs like a hundred thousand pesos or two thousand dollars, you should you should charge them with that. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. thought you were gonna come out with a formula like if you feel like it costs a million, divide that by seven thousand yeah. and. <laughs> no, it's in it. It's basically your design is valued in it. So that's yeah, the main yeah. fact. That's the main reason you want to price. It's the main mm-hmm. factor. Uh, number okay. two, you want to factor in the timeline of the project. It's gonna take if it's gonna take uh, if, if the timeline is too long, then you're gonna take it. You're gonna take a long time doing it. So you can you can charge it as that. Then, like for example, if the time is too short and the amount of work is super super huge, like you can price it, uh, you price as much as you can. Say it's rush. Mm-hmm. Wow. And another thing that you could you should factor in is like the the scope of work of course for example i'm gonna do a logo yeah logo lang so basically i, I want to press a logo lang it's gonna be more expensive than just overlays Let's say a logo is more expensive than the supplementary graphics right okay so what what if like i want to do a logo and then someone asks me to do just a poster so normally the comparison between those two is the logo is obviously ex- more expensive than what a poster or an overlay would, would price. Okay. Yeah, the complexity of the project then. Oh man, that's so I cool. That, I I'm learning so much. Already wow. I'm learning so much and <laughs> you know, get, getting a peek behind uh yeah. what it takes to, to to not only you know do graphics but also you know work yourself around yeah. the industry because you, you, like like you mentioned earlier it is very competitive and yeah. people have to worry about not just getting clients <clears throat> but also you know retaining yeah. clients I uh, think, yeah yeah no, i do have ahead. a qu- i do have a question though like you, you you mentioned about you know like how you how your rates are do you like give a breakdown when it's like, oh, this is the work I've done, and these are everything I've done, and these are everything I've charged under you? Like for example, oh, I was doing your work in the middle of the night, and I was made you sleepy, so I bought coffee. I charged that five pesos to you, like that. Do, do, would you, do you go to the lengths of actually even no. like reimbursing certain things? 
No. no. Medyo ano na eh, medyo OA na eh. <laughs> that is that is like, true. Like my, my kind of pricing is mostly value based pricing. So Oh, I see. I feel like my values way up there so I try try to charge way up there then. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything naman na I I yeah. spend on for myself is usually for myself naman. True. Awesome. But the, but your work speaks for itself. I mean, you know, so that's why you can charge that high because it's it's really quality. You can see it. All right. Isn't that right, Harold? Oh, definitely, definitely. Like the poster that he made for this show was oh, jaw dropping. Yeah, it's better it than any poster we've done. No offense, Earl. He's hey, the man. Designer. He's the graphic hey, man. designer guy. Don't knock it if it works. <laughs> Let me look for that. Uh, yeah, so like, but I'm, uh, to answer your question, by the way, um, I don't do that, and I I won't recommend it because uh, you basically charge for every bit, and now they can buy, they can. They can just pay for whatever they want, love. So you don't want that, right? That's true. Yeah. For example, uh, I I charge for panels at this cost. So maybe they're gonna get you for those cost, love, like panels. So in my case, I don't want that because it's it's super low, love. The money that you get. Alright, so I, I pulled up the. Oh, look at that. Uh, there it is. Yeah. You see? You see, uh, you you see that? You don't, you don't even I see did his that face. The morning I went to the office. It's like, oh, hey, like, I woke up and did that. I don't. I don't like even this. see your face, and I want to watch the show. Nice. This is oh, this man. is the first and only episode I will ever watch of Game yeah. Bite because of this poster. <laughs> this will be the only. You know. You know what we should do, Harold? Like when we have the VOD up, you just put this poster. In yeah, the... it's, sure. Just, just use that. Is it okay? Oh. Is it okay, RD? Yeah, dude. Just it's, for this it's episode. Yours. It's yours. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, man. We got free work from RD, guys. We can retire. <laughs> We're good. Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, and Harold, stage left. Okay, so, uh, oh wow, G- uh, I think Gwen is in the chat somewhere. So, oh, and uh, so, the Sun Wukong man, so, JV Alcantara is in the chat as well. Hey man, hey man. Shout hey. out to Noble Rand on the chat as well. How you doing, buddy? How are you doing, guys? Sun Wukong, what's up? All right. So, oh, oh. <laughs> Couple, couple, a uh, couple of eyebrow lifts. There is, is that a, is that a sign? Is that a, we talking yeah, about? Yeah, inside some... joke. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, this is actually a good question that I totally forgot to ask because I wanted to know about your process right away. Santa Pops in the chat asks, "Where did the name Overdrive, uh, over the, R D, uh, esport design come from?" <laughs> All right. So if you if you seen the the logo. Like the original logo of Overdrive, mm-hmm. you see that the the capital letter, the the highlighted letters of Overdrive is RDR, just my mm-hmm. initials. So RD Rogajan. So I tried to make a logo lang that's like a circular logo, and then I placed RDR, and then I placed Overdrive in. It's just big Overdrive. Because you name pasok sa name eh. So kind of how it started. Wait, was was Overdrive just a coincidence that it had RDR? Yeah. Yep. What? Yep. What? <laughs> what? Uh, it, is, it is. It is. It is. Are you serious? That is like the most serendipitous wow. thing I've ever heard. Pero ano nasa parang sakto na nagsasip parang what I want to do is to take your brand into Overdrive, so it kind of adds wow. meaning to it. Yeah. But that's the that's the real reason. It's because RDR is in there. Oh, that's so cool! Wow. I'm trying to look that's for the so old cool. logo, but it's not in your profile pictures anymore. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I mean, in in the the page, the Facebook page. Yeah, it's there. The first profile picture I have, the oh, July yeah. 23, 2016. July 23. Oh man, we're going way back. People. We're going way back. But that, dude, that that is so fortunate. Wait, ah, there, your cover photo has it. Let me let me bring that up. There. Oh, is that the one? Is that the one? Oh, that's that's me. Yeah, dude, that's it's badass. It's badass. Do you have photo shoots on the regular? Is that is that your life? You just have you just, are you just like, hey man, let's do a photo shoot, and then you just start posing. No, that that's just me. I, I did it by myself. So it was one Saturday while I was in the studio. So just okay, let's do some good photos. So I have stuff to send out to to clients and to everyone that I'm working with. This dude, me. that's badass. That's such a cool. Me, that was... But there's no face. That's so cool, yeah. man. Again, the, the the poster you made for Game Bite is is so badass. 
<sighs> yeah, it does. It really does. And it, so I'm assuming yeah, these are evergreen. So like you just, as long as you feel like they're good enough, you just keep sending them out with different designs to, to clients. Yeah. Wow. See, work smart and not hard, kids. Uh, work work hard too, but you know, work smarter. Work smarter. Smarter is better than harder. Uh, we got we got requests in the chat for some swimsuit photos. Like, is that a is that something that <laughs> you're looking into in the future? We could do that next summer. The RD oh. swimsuit special. Swimsuit special. Oh, man, you got a stream. You got a live stream that. <laughs> yeah, we got. <laughs> you got a live stream. You guys will join me, of course. Of course. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. Shades. Our yeah, RDXQS space swimsuit. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, so, Mick, man, final questions for RD before we get to our last bit, of, uh, last bit of the show where we talk about very important news in the country. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. let's go for final questions now. Uh, not serious. Uh, what's your favorite gun in PUBG? Uh, SKS. Oh, SKS. Ooh, I see. Nice. We got a sniper, man. <laughs> yeah, you and, can say he's uh, SKS. You know, yeah. Sick. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm good, Harold. Your turn. Uh, so you, you, uh, how much Overwatch do you play, RD? Uh, I actually stopped for a year, let's say, but I just got back to Overwatch right now because of the Overwatch League. Ooh. Oh, but so yeah, bad. I also started so last year, which is kind of weird. So I also stopped there. Nice. And uh, yeah, what I, characters do you play in Overwatch? I'm, I'm not one of those uh, people who are like, who do you main? Because I hate that question. I can play more uh, than uh, one person. Well, I main Lucio. <laughs> ah! <laughs> nice. This man breaks it down. <laughs> All right. Actually, I have, a, I have that sound bite, don't I? Here we go. For you. Oh, let's break it down. All right, that's for you. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, any, any more questions? That you have uh just keep spamming them in the chat we'll eventually get to them as we go through the show in the final bits uh gibson chill says overdrive esports calendar oh, Ooh, oh shit. Shit. he just said he doesn't want to do print gibbs but we'll make him we'll do it we'll do it we'll make him do it we'll make him do it <laughs> uh sun wukong in the chat says quit stalling ask him when was the last time he went to spa <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you went to the spa, RD? Uh, three months ago. How about you, oh. Wukong? Last night. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> uh, man, oh, let's uh, let's call this over. Uh, let's, let's move on. Uh, so, guys, we, we got we got some news to talk about in the country mm -hmm. because uh, it's very important. This country is very, there's no other place we could live in legally yet. We're looking at you, yeah. China. One day, one day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> China, wow. wow! Of all the countries in the world, you chose. China. I mean, I mean, you know, Southeast China is is what we will be called in the future. Uh, okay, true. so guys, <laughs> hopefully not true. Uh, so we, we actually, you know what? Let's let's do a proper breaker for this. I mean, let's, let's cut the music, guys. Cut the music. Uh, let's do this. Here we go. <laughs> All right, guys, we got some news, and the news is brought to you by Word Beach by Cool Apps. Do you want to connect letters and spell words? Do you like fruit? Do you like fruit that's shaped like letters? Challenge your vocabulary when you download Cool Apps' game Word Beach out now on iOS and Android. Enjoy yourself while you're on the toilet. Word Beach by Cool Apps. Check it out. iOS and Android. All right, guys, yeah. we got some news. And, uh, you know, we haven't tackled much news recently because we, we've had such wonderful guests that we tend to go overtime with. You know, some would say we go overdrive with our guests. Uh, but this piece of news cannot be ignored because I saw it on Sega Chew's Facebook and you know, she's here in the chat. So, you know, we got we to gotta tackle it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, six days ago, nigh nearly a week ago, it was announced that the at, that our country will be getting an esports organization, a franchise-based esports league specifically, in 2019. And I want to get everyone's thoughts on that because this seems big. I mean, as as unheralded and oh, I don't mean that as un unlikely <laughs> as it is. Wow. You know, we're we're getting a local esports league that is franchise-based, which is, in my opinion, risky. And also, 
uh, yeah, it seemed like a pipe dream just just a couple mm-hmm. of months ago because, yeah, we we screwed up a local soccer league. How are we gonna do with esports? Whew. Wow. Okay. This is this is a very interesting topic to be to be honest because think about it. I mean, like let let's let's break down some of the details here, like the founding members, which is bre- basically Brand Pro Inc. Signal TV Inc., PLDT, The Net, and of course SD, SDI Education Holdings. So it's it's very interesting to see that these these companies are actually might actually invest in esports. I mean, like maybe Brand Pro not so much because they have been. They do have their own esports. They're in esports already. Yeah. They're already in esports, mm-hmm. but to see like SDI Education Holdings actually like be interested <laughs> in esports. Come on, it's an education system. I mean, like this, it's like gaming, like. Gaming or esports versus an education are don't go don't you know don't blend I mean, well, right? They're one of the uh, schools that support esports. Open. Oh, they, they, do. they are. Oh, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. Like if we're gonna talk about uh, them right now, you know, uh, it's kind of like uh, if you guys are familiar with IMG Academy in the U.S., where they're they're an institute for learning as well, but they train athletes. And they're very well known. So if we if if they could pull off a similar thing where they're supporting esports and developing yeah. you know the youth to become uh, esports athletes in the future the right way, then you know by all means like if and they're supporting the, these these future athletes well and they're supporting the esports scene properly, I I think it's a good move. But you know going back to the league itself, man, it's weird that we're getting this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 very surreal. abrupt. It's a very abrupt. I mean, like they haven't, no offense, but they haven't really solved that whole issue with with the the games and amusement board yet. I mean, like they're very strict in having uh, a turn, in having you know for foreigners to actually come here and compete. And now we're gonna have our own league. I mean, come on, dude. This is this is this is very interesting. I, I want to see what exactly happens. Yeah, Artie, really man, your really... thoughts on this. I mean, with the way what, with the way that happened over Gundam, parang, this is the way that we could get more tournaments in the mm-hmm. long run. So it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is interesting to see. I'm really excited at this project, uh, how this project will go. And yeah, so right now we've seen the details over the net, parang, which is yeah. super sparse. Parang, you know? yes. So yeah. waiting to see what happens with development of the league i think they're starting next year Bata. uh and first quarter of next year yeah yeah so they are they're, they're obviously gonna plan for this whole week mm-hmm. for so long so yeah i'm really excited for this yeah yeah uh you know i i wasn't too cynical about it until we started talking about it just now uh you know mick mentioned <laughs> the fact that we can't even have proper international tournaments nowadays because of the games and amusement sport amusement boards, uh, new rulings and, and laws. And I think, uh, I think this is a master stroke because now we don't have to rely too hard on international tournaments. We're going to have domestic tournaments and yeah, the cynic in me is seeing this as a band aid uh, mm-hmm. for, for esports. Because, yeah. Cause they needed it. Like this is they actually do. the perfect time to do this because we're not going to have international tournaments hosted locally for the foreseeable future. So what better way to, to put a band aid on that than to say, start yeah. your own esports league. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to get too controversial because we want to avoid all the heat, yeah. but geez, I'm, I'm, I'm starting <laughs> I, to become cynical about the league even more. I, I got to I got to give them props though because they they chose some really good games as the starting lineup because the thing is they they announced that they will be having four games one in each platform which is for PC you have Dota 2 for consoles you have 2K and then of course for mobile you have Mobile Legends bang bang um mm-hmm. and then they also announced a wild card so no one knows what that game is so Mm-hmm. I don't know how how it's gonna work. That, that is the wild card going to change based on the season? Will it um, or will it be like like every year they introduce a new wild card? So whichever whichever was like for 2019's wild card, it will be a a, a staple for the whole league uh, on 
the whole league, and then are, they're gonna add something new. I don't know. It's it's very interesting, and you know, though I'm a bit cynical about it, and you know, with a lot of th- because of a lot of things that are going on with the esports scene here locally, and yeah, I'll I'll keep a close eye on this. Yeah. I, I will. I will. Yeah, RD man, what what are your thoughts? Because uh, we have people in the chat saying they're not fans yeah. of mobile esports, even though you know a lot of. Uh, local organizations, you know, we're talking the Mineskis of, of the country. Uh, you know, they're putting a lot of money in mobile esports because mobile mm-hmm. esports are very accessible. So I, I want to get your thoughts on this. Meta is one of the future games here, honestly. With yeah. the access we have for mobile technology, so it's kind of easy to get into the mobile esports. Plus, everyone's everyone's playing the game now, so yeah, it's a huge opportunity to tap into that market even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh man, it's yeah, it is very interesting, especially you know as as we've mentioned and the people in the chat are mentioning uh, the the G, the games and amusements boards uh, licensing uh, and and the fact that you have to register and and pass drug tests and all of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward. I I want to be optimistic about this league because uh, it gives an opportunity where again there, there was none to, to be uh to be accessible you know like becoming a mineski athlete wasn't really at the reach of everyone as, as much as we we'd want it to be uh becoming a tier one uh and and all the other esports organizations becoming athletes listed under them uh it's not that easy and now that we have a league uh Odd to say, you know, like the PBA, the Philippine Basketball Association, mm-hmm. there are teams, multiple teams now that are widely recognized that youngsters can can actually aspire to be part of and, and compete for. And, you know, who knows where this will take us? Because uh, traditional sports, as popular as they are, you know, not not everyone is in a good situation uh, physically <laughs> to be able to compete, you know, I'm, I'm talking about genetics, but, you know, uh, I think esports are a, gl- a great way, uh, to provide opportunities for, for today's youth, especially as addictive vi- as video games are. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, and yeah, I want, I want to, I want to discuss this so much more, but we don't have that much time. Uh, yeah, I want to get your final thoughts on on the nationals, as it's being called, guys. Uh, let's let's start off with with Mick, man. If they add Hearthstone, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That, you you you're just set on Hearthstone. Okay, RD, man. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts on on the nationals. I mean, I'm excited, honestly, and I can't wait to see all the branding the the teams will have. Chris, uh, cross fingers. I hope I get to work with some of them. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm sure you're gonna work. You're gonna work. <laughs> sell out, them. Sell out. Not some of, just at least one of them. Do you'll, it. You'll... This man right here. This man <laughs> yeah. right here. He deserves so, it. That I am excited about how yeah. these things will develop in the near mm-hmm. future. Looking forward. It. It. Uh, <laughs> You know what? Would, you know what would be a nice like name of a team. You know, I just realized, like you could call it, like if Moralco's uh, made a franchise for an esport team, they could be called the Moralco Power Banks. Damn. Oh that would, shit. That'd be pretty cool, right? That'd be pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's a little, it's a little silly, but it's pretty cool. I mean, it, it or makes the sense, right? LVT disconnectors. Disconnect. Oh, oh, be good. Oh man, if yeah. you if you had like a Manny V thing, you could just go the Moralco B uh, the Moralco BDO power banks. So you power yeah. in banks. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Oh. Power banks. Oh. You can take that one, Manny V. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, all right. So lastly, oh, I forgot I killed the bed music earlier. <laughs> all right. Uh, lastly, RD, I want to ask. Saw this video. Uh, on your oh, on your page, and it looks so sick. What is this? What is the studio? So oh, no the studio studio is a series of videos that I'm producing for Facebook and for Twitch. It's gonna be on Esport Overdrive on our socials. Basically, it's wow. a quick look of what work we're doing for Overdrive. Basically, so episode one features uh, a, a branding that I did for my friend Spirit Biceps when he was in the studio. Uh, it's a live, it's it's an IRL live graphic. So, but they went to the studio and then they showed. I showed him the process of how I did his work live. Oh man, 
that's so cool. So, uh, when can we expect more of the studio? Uh, I've been pushing this back for months now. Say, nah. the, and I've been doing so probably yeah. July or August at most. Yeah. Uh, ho hopefully, yeah. I get to do it more. I need me more of this. I need me more of the studio. Like wow. I told you earlier on, I'm a sucker for behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. I, I will eat so nice. this up. Yeah. yeah, man. Like there's that Netflix show uh, about uh, design and like the behind the scenes oh. of, of design, and I'm, I'm so, I'm so looking forward to watching it after this after the show. Yeah. Uh, oh, man, let, let me look it up. Netflix. I, I'm it's definitely gonna. I am definitely gonna watch the toys that made us. It's the it's like the behind the scenes of how the toys that we love today are, are made. They're re it's really nice. You guys should watch it. Oh, yeah. I've watched oh, some of them. Yeah, it's nice, right? The yeah. Star Wars one is great. The Star Wars one was amazing. Ooh. I know. That sounds cool. Also, oh, the Lego called one. Abstract. The Lego one crazy. Yeah, sorry. Oh, it's abstract, called Abstract, the art of design. Yeah, so I'm going to open my Netflix it. now. So All right. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load awesome. that right now. All right. So... RD man, hey, let me let me play the proper music for this. Here we go. All right, RD, it's been awesome having you on the show, and yeah, it's it's definitely been our pleasure as as your hosts to to, to have you on and to talk about your work. Uh, there's so much more that I want to ask you, but yeah, we'll save that for your second your second episode because I'm pretty sure if you could spare us some time, we will have you on in a heartbeat. Sure, uh, dude. Let me know. Yes! Yes! Okay, so here we go. RD, man, where can the folks at home find you when you're not on Game Byte? So, guys, you can check out everything that I do for Overdrive Esports Design at facebook.com slash esports overdrive. Uh, for behind the scenes and memes, twitter.com slash esports overdrive. For BTS and work in progress shots, you can also check out our Instagram at esports overdrive. And yeah, you can also follow us on Twitch here. It's twitch.tv slash overdrive. We're planning to return to live streaming really soon. Yeah, you can also follow my personal socials. It's uh, instagram.com slash rdesign. So it's R-D-E-E-Z-Y-N. And then it, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash rdz. It's rd with the four e's and z-y. Awesome, awesome. Nice. Dude, it, it's been our pleasure. And I... I I have so many more things to ask you during the after show. So we're, we're, we're going to... Go. Yeah, so we're going to have a very brief after show, ladies and gentlemen, as we always do with the end of Game Bites. So if you're watching live, uh, stick around after the credits. Mick, man, where can the folks at home find you when you're not on Game Bite? When I'm not on Game Bite, you could find me on Twitter. That is at the Fury Bot. You can find me on my non-existent Twitch channel. That is twitch.tv slash the Fury Bot. And of course, for everything else, you can always find me on our VODs, on on the Facebook group, and of course, here at the over, uh, Overdrive. <laughs> 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 at GameBite, at GameBite, we, every Wednesday night, 9.30 p.m. only here on Twitch Stalling Media Network. So, Harold, where can the fine folks find you when you're not on GameBite? If you guys want to check me out outside of Game Bite, because I know you want to, check me out at Harold Plays on Twitter and Instagram. I'm also uh, on Twitch. I stream. My my channel is existent. It exists, and uh, it's it's sparsely used, but it does exist. Uh, oh Twitch.tv slash <laughs> Harold Plays. That's H E R A L D Plays. All right. Uh, so check me out uh, next week. Me and Wancho are back in the driver's seat of the Quit Stalling Geek Cast. Let me, let me throw that up real quick. Yes, the Quit Stalling Geek Cast is back 12 noon on Tuesday. Your lunch break will be filled with geek goodness. All right, we're not going to talk about Chris Hardwick and how he's been accused of, of very wrong things. No Nerdist uh, on his end, but we're going to talk about a lot of good things like Star Wars. We finally get to talk about Solo. Maybe a little bit of Deadpool too because we haven't talked about that yet. All that good stuff. All that good geek stuff. Check it out. 12 noon next week on Tuesday. And then after that, at night, me, Sorbetta's PH. Uh, no, I'm not Sorbetta's PH. Me and Sorbetta's PH will be hosting the Quit Stalling Community Overwatch Scrim Night. So check that out. We just we just have people show up in a custom game lobby. We have them fight each other. 
Uh, and it, it's really fun. We shout cast and everything. It's so fun. Uh, we, we just we just have a blast. Uh, last night was was great because both teams were very evenly matched and competitive. The VOD should be on the video tab, so check that out. It's super cool. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I want to thank everyone for tuning in and, you know, giving this man some love. Giving this man some love because we all know he deserves it. Artie, it's been our pleasure to have you on the show once again. So, guys, till next week, we'll be back same bite time, same bite channel. Until then... Get off your butts and quit stalling. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Where's that button? There we go.